In our last video, we defined connectivity and connected components in undirected graphs, and in class we saw how we could use breadth-first search to determine whether two vertices were connected, or to find the connected component of a vertex in big O of n plus m time. But when we defined connectivity and connected components, we said we would need to modify those definitions to make sense in directed graphs. The reason is that in an undirected graph, any two vertices that are connected are connected in both directions. But in a directed graph, we can have a path from vertex u to v, but not have a path back from v to u. So in a directed graph, we can say that vertex u is reachable from v if there is a path from v to u. And we can say that two vertices are mutually reachable if there are paths in both directions. And then instead of talking about connected components, we can talk about the strongly connected component of vertex v, which we define as the set of all vertices that are mutually reachable with v. So if we want to write an algorithm to find the strongly connected component of a vertex, our first idea might be to use our definition based on mutual reachability. And so we can start with a helper function to test whether two vertices are mutually reachable. Our mutually reachable function simply does a breadth-first search starting from u to see if we can reach v, and a breadth-first search starting from v to see if we can reach u. And if we can go in both directions, then as long as our breadth-first search is correct, we have an algorithm for mutual reachability. And since our breadth-first search algorithm takes big O of n plus m time, we will have two calls that each take n plus m, and so this will be a big O of n plus m function. And then, using this function for mutual reachability, we could write a function to find the strongly connected component of a given vertex. So with this algorithm, as long as our mutually reachable function is correct, we will have looped through all of the other vertices and added all of the ones that are mutually reachable to the component. So the component that is returned by our algorithm matches exactly with our definition of a strongly connected component. The trouble with this algorithm is that we are calling our mutually reachable function in a for loop that runs n times. And so this algorithm for finding a strongly connected component is much less efficient than our algorithm for finding a connected component in an undirected graph. This directed graph version is taking n times as long as the undirected graph version, which can be done in a single breadth for search. Because as we saw, in an undirected graph, we can simply return the set of all vertices visited by breadth for search to get the connected component. So ideally, we'd like to have some way of finding strongly connected components where the running time is on the same order as finding connected components. And the clever idea here is that we can use one run of breadth for search to find all of the vertices that are reachable from v, and then another run of breadth for search on a different graph to find all of the vertices from which v is reachable.
So this algorithm for finding strongly connected components begins by constructing a graph that has the same vertices as g, but for every edge that appears in g, we put the reverse of that edge in our reverse graph. This step takes time proportional to the number of vertices to copy v, and time proportional to the number of edges to reverse everything in E. Now we have two calls to our function that finds a connected component if given an undirected graph, but instead we are giving directed graphs and using this function to find the set of vertices that are visited when we search from S in the original graph and in the reverse graph, and then we will take the intersection of those two visited sets to give us all of the vertices that were reached in both the outward search and the reverse search. Each of these two lines takes big O of n plus m time, and then we have two sets that are both subsets of the vertices, and so we can iterate through to find their intersection in big O of n time. So overall, our new strongly connected component function with three different big O of n plus m operations runs in big O of n plus m time. So clearly, if both of these algorithms for finding strongly connected components are correct, then we would prefer version 2. So our task now is to prove the correctness of these algorithms. And because both of these algorithms rely on calls to breadth-first search, we first need to show that when we run breadth-first search on a directed graph, we will visit every vertex that is reachable from S. If we can show that for any vertex t, there is a path from s to t if and only if the breadth for search starting from s visits t, then we know that all of the vertices that are reachable will end up in the visited set. And this will get us most of the way to proving the correctness of both algorithms. So we'll start with the forward implication that if there is a path, then breadth for search will visit t. And we can show this by induction on the length of that path, because whenever we reach a vertex, we will explore its neighbors, and so all of the paths that are one longer will eventually be explored. Our base case is a path of length 1, which is just the vertex S. And since we start breadth for search by enqueuing the start vertex, on the first iteration of the loop, we will take that start vertex out of the queue and visit it. So we've visited the only vertex that can have a length zero path. So then our inductive hypothesis is that for any path of length less than or equal to k, we will visit the end of that path in breadth for search. And then we'll use that to show that we will also visit the ends of length k plus 1 paths. So we're trying to show, based on our inductive hypothesis, that we must also visit t if it is the end of a length k plus 1 path. 
And so we're supposing that there is a length k plus 1 path that ends at t, and in any length k plus 1 path, there must be a kth vertex, and we'll call that vertex x. Then if we throw out t, the last vertex on this length k plus 1 path, we're left with a length k path, and the end of that length k path is x. And by our inductive hypothesis, we know that if there is a length k path, breadth first search will visit the last node on that path, x. So we know that breadth first search will visit the second to last vertex on the path, and when it does, that vertex x will be put into the queue, and on subsequent iterations of the while loop, we will take other vertices out of the queue in front of x, and as long as the graph is finite, there must be a finite number of things in front of x in the queue, and so we know that x will eventually be dequeued, and when we dequeue x, we will visit all of the neighbors of x, which will include t, because the last edge on the path is an edge from x to t. We should also prove the reverse implication that everything visited by breadth for search is reachable from s. So here we will inductively show that if the first k vertices that are visited are reachable, then the k plus first vertex will also be reachable. Because just the start vertex is a valid path, we have that the first vertex that is visited by breadth first search is reachable from s. In our inductive hypothesis, we're assuming that all of the vertices that were visited earlier in the execution of breadth first search are in fact reachable. And then we want to use this to argue that the next vertex we visit is also reachable. When we visit t, that's in the inner for loop, where we just took some vertex v out of the queue, and now we will loop through all of the neighbors of v and visit them. And so that means that there must be an edge from v to t, and by the inductive hypothesis, we know that v, which was previously visited when we put it into the queue, must have a path from s, and since there's an edge from v to t, we can put t on the end of that path to reach t from s, which means that every vertex we visit has some path from s. Your task now is to think about how this lemma helps us prove the correctness of both versions of the strongly connected component algorithm. The first, less efficient version should be easy to prove once we have this lemma, whereas for the second version, we're going to need to think a little bit about what's going on when we build the reverse graph, and how is that giving us the information that we need to find a strongly connected component.